Welcome to Electra Online. In this video, we're going to show you that the, that the fundamental theorem of gradients does work, at least in this example, and we're all also going to show you that it's path independent. On the previous video, we showed you that if we traveled from the origin to this point right here and straight up, we got the same result as if we evaluated the function at the two endpoints and then took the difference between the two values and we indeed got the value of 2. But what happens now when we travel, travel along this diagonal line? We call that path 2. And of course, again, we're going to take the integral from a to b of the gradient of the function dotted with dl. And to get a head start on it, we're just going to take the components that are not 0, because 0 z, we don't need that. So we have the 2, we have the x and the y components of the gradient. And we're going to then take the dot product of the x and the y components of the line segment dl. Again, z is not changing, so dz will be 0, so we don't have to take that into account. So when we take the dot product, we only get the x and the y components that survive, so that this would be equal to the integral from a to b. And of course, we then just have the general limits from a to b, because we haven't figured out yet what the number should be. So when we multiply, we get y squared times dx, plus 2xy times dy. Now, of course, here we have a y squared dx and we have 2xy times dy. That doesn't work very well. So we have to find some relationship between x and y to eliminate one of the two variables. If I take a look at this line that looks like a straight line, and if we use the equation y equals mx plus b, it looks like we could write that y is equal to 1 half x, or x is equal to 2y. which means that dx is equal to 2dy. That means x is changing twice as fast as y is. And so what I can do then is I can make a change. I can take everything and move it and turn it into x, var uh, x variables. So y squared, well, let's see here. If I take y squared, hmm, maybe I'll go the other way around. I'll eliminate x and go with y only. So y squared, can be written as, no, I think I'll do the following. All right, so if I square both sides, I get x squared is equal to 4y squared. So I keep the y squared? Yes, let's just keep the y squared. So now we have to change dx. dx is equal to 2dy, so let's do that. So this can be written as the integral from a to b. And y squared remains. I was just trying to think of what I should do. Should I eliminate x? Should I eliminate y? I think it's easier just to eliminate x. And so dx then becomes times 2dy. So I'll put the 2 in front and write this as a dy. And then plus a second integral. So I'm going to separate two integrals. Here I have a 2 in front. So plus 2. I have an x. And x can be turned into 2y. So that gives me a 4. 4 y times y, which would be y squared. Okay, so we begin what we did. The x here is 2y. 2 times 2 is 4. That goes right there. And the y times the y becomes a y squared. And I have a dy. All right, those two integrals again from a to b. But now, since I'm integrating over y only, and y changes from 0 to 1, so that I can just say that a equals 0, b equals 1, a equals 0, b equals 1. And that should be equal to 2 if the fundamental theorem of gradients holds. All right, this is equal to, the first integral would be 2y cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to 1, plus the second integral will be 4y cubed over 3, and again from 0 to 1. All right, when I plug in the lower limits, of course, I get nothing. When I plug in the upper limits, I get 2 thirds plus 4 thirds which is equal to 6 thirds, which is equal to 2. And again, notice, we can end up with the very same result as before. It is equal to the difference between the function evaluated at b minus the function evaluated at a. And so, again, we, can show, we showed you that the fundamental theorem of gradients does seem very practical and can be quickly used to avoid having all this work and simply get to the final answer. And we can also be assured that it appears to be path independent as we claimed. And that is how it's done.